Hunched over in his home study pod, squishy green face furrowed with concentration, Bolly tried his best to memorise the elemental body composition of the most recent species to have joined the Intergalactic Alliance. Like every young Louvrian specialising in medicine, it was his job to learn and fundamentally understand the biology of all members of the IGA. Louvians as a species were especially well suited to administering medical treatment. Statistics would agree. Of all the physicians selected to serve on deep space missions since species-based discrimination had been outlawed, all but one had been Louvian. The mission involving the single counterexample had ended in disaster, with less than 12% of the crew surviving. Should have had a Louvian doctor on board. Bolly hoped to one day be remembered as the greatest physician of all time. He just wished someone had warned him how boring the prerequisite biological chemistry course would be. Hydrogen, oxygen, carbon, nitrogen, calcium and phosphorus. Hydrogen, oxygen, carbon, nitrogen, calcium and phosphorus. Hydrogen, ugh, Bolly gurgled. He simply could not see the point in memorising what was depicted on his glow pad, especially when it was so very clearly wrong. No matter how strange a species, there was no way a natural life form utilised carbon compounds for basic structural and metabolic functions. The idea was laughable. It was even written that the species used dihydrogen monoxide as a solvent within the body. That sounded like something pulled straight from a science fiction light show. Perhaps these humans were a prank thought up by his instructors. Lost in thought, and feeling peckish, Bolly extended a pseudopod towards the emitter above his desk, turning its source style from solar to geothermal to satisfy his energy cravings. He simultaneously immersed a pseudopod in the ammonia fountain behind him, taking a long sip of the flavorful liquid. A satisfied rumble spread throughout his body, causing ripples to spread across his skin. Ammonia always tasted the best at home. After spending the better part of an hour mulling over the implications of carbon-based life, Bolly came to a decision. He would no longer try to memorise the information, since there was a good chance it was flawed. He was not one to waste his time. His instructors were probably having a grand old time in the pleasure lounge, laughing and bonding over their little prank. Let them. Naturally occurring carbon-based life was surely a joke, but it wasn't a completely unreasonable idea that it could artificially be created. Molly planned to have the last laugh. Powering down his glow pad and filling a bottle with ammonia to go, he extended to his full height. At a little over 10 centimetres, he was tall for a Louvrian and oozed over the edge of the study pod, towards the portal leading above ground. He had somewhere to be, and that somewhere was the Xenobiochemistry Lab at the Louvre Planetary Institute. Whether or not they actually existed, Bolly was going to create a human. Both suns had set by the time Bolly's travel pod arrived at the Institute's metro station. It had taken him a whole day of gliding around Louvre Lyon City to gather all the materials he needed. The six ingredients he drilled into his head earlier in the day had been surprisingly easy to acquire, he simply had to swing by the local space market to pick them up. The way the clerk had eyed him up for purchasing them all together, Bolly had no doubt his name would have been submitted to various watch lists for potential drug dealers. It didn't matter. What he was really making, while a whole lot stronger, was not illegal to create. Humans, even if they were by some freak chance real, would have been too new to the IGA to be included in the list of universally protected species. There were several other ingredients Bolly had required as well, although the acquisition was more complicated. Various minerals required for the synthesis of the strange organism were legally restricted in Larvo due to their toxicity and the danger they posed their life on the planet. These materials included sulfur, potassium, sodium, chlorine and magnesium. To acquire these materials, Bolly had needed to contact some old friends whose line of work was... less than reputable, to say the least. These friends had not been able to provide some additional trace elements, however, at least not for a reasonable price. Having no other options, Bolly had reluctantly purchased the local alternatives they offered at a discount. Since the amounts needed were negligible, he reasoned the substitution wouldn't lead to any major issues down the line. The final ingredient required for the creation of a viable organism, a complete genetic template, would have been next to impossible to attain had Bolly been the average Louvrian citizen. Those sorts of materials were simply too dangerous to be allowed in the hands of the general public. Thankfully, he was a registered physician in training, all he'd had to do was download a few DNA files from the Earth module of his virtual classroom. Every Louvrian physician in training knew the importance of splicing multiple sums of DNA to create a new individual rather than a clone, and Bolly had been surprised to find several unique Earth samples available for his use. His instructors really had set up an elaborate prank. Displaying his student credentials to the portal at the entrance of the Xenobiology lab, Bolly nervously pulsed as the opaque disc before him slowly vanished to reveal the room beyond. No matter how many times he created a life form, 
The artistry of the whole procedure made his heart race. Applying a protective coating to his body to shield against splashes, Bolly quickly got to work. Gliding from bench to bench and working through the night, he used his raw materials to synthesize one compound after the other. The room glowed with the flickering light of the chemical reactions. Finally, once the materials had been suitably prepared, he made his way to the tool that would make all his hard work pay off. Seeing it always took his breath away. It was the most beautiful work of engineering he had ever laid his eyes on, and the most advanced piece of machinery available to any Louvian physician. It could transfer a consciousness to a new body, or create intelligent life from scratch. He could hardly believe it was his to play with. Bolly carefully decanted materials into the central vat of the instrument, and spliced the Earth DNA samples to combine them. Uploading the now combined Earth DNA into the instrument's computer, he took special care to adjust the settings, so that his creation would come as close as possible to resembling the organism described in the textbook. He wished his teachers had made their description of a human a little more realistic. Taking 26 years to reach full maturity was simply ridiculous. That was over 100 times longer than the natural Luvian lifespan. Nonetheless, he adjusted the specifications accordingly. It wasn't like he'd have to raise the thing himself. The machine-created organism would be created completely mature. Double-checking that all settings were as desired and taking a deep breath, Bolly initialized and activated the machine. He was promptly greeted by several warnings issued by the computer's robotic voice. Warning! Genetic scan indicates multi-species splice. Cancel operation if unexpected. Warning! Genetic scan indicates dimorphism may be exhibited by this organism. Database search or provided genetic sample does not provide sufficient information to implement this feature. If you choose to proceed, dimorphism related settings will be ignored. Created organism will be capable of independently producing offspring. Warning! Element substitution detected. Unexpected materials detected in formulation VAT. If you choose to proceed, there may be unexpected results. Bolly read the warnings, mentally processing each one. He had not been expecting a multi-species splice. Perhaps the genetic diversity of humans was much greater than that of other species in the universe, leading each individual to register as a unique species. There was no way a planet could support multiple species, especially when one was supposedly advanced enough to join the IGA. In any case, he couldn't cancel the operation, not when he was so close to success. The second warning was likely due to the first. It made sense that a database search for his combined Earth sample wouldn't return much information, especially if the machine incorrectly thought there had been a multi-species splice. Regarding the lack of dimorphism and the ability of the created organism to independently produce offspring, Bolly wasn't very concerned. Lurians could choose their form and independently produce offspring as well, and it hadn't led to any issues so far. Perhaps the human wouldn't be very accurate when it came to physiology, but it would be close enough. The third warning was unfortunate, but both expected and unavoidable. He simply could not afford the remaining imported materials. Without a second thought, Bolly activated the life-giving instrument. He would create a human, and in doing so would prove to his instructors how ridiculous their claims were. The machine came to life with a hum, his arms moving faster and faster. From the fact, a shape began to emerge. When the procedure was complete, Bolly was horrified by what he saw. The sleeping creature was colossal, and did not at all look like the cute and cuddly illustration from the medical textbook. Every inch of its skin was covered by hard, crisscrossing scales, completely unlike the sparse fuzz he had expected. A thin membrane stretched between each of its clawed fingers, similar to some aquatic species known to the IGA. A thicker, downy membrane connected its disproportionately long arms to its torso, which wore gills and was supported by thickly muscled, hoofed legs. The pointed tips of his large ears twitched, seemingly picking up the remaining drumbeat of Bolly's hearts. The textbook artists had clearly never seen a human. Unless they had. A chilling thought touched Bolly's mind. Just because no plants had been known to sustain more than one species, it didn't mean it was impossible. If Earth indeed was home to multiple species, and he had combined multiple genetic samples when creating new life, he was in deep trouble. That sort of thing requires specialised training due to the risk involved, and Bolly wasn't licensed. He could even be kicked out of school for breaking the law. Perhaps he had been hasty in ignoring the warning about a multi-species splice. Bolly rushed to turn off the machine before it was too late, but found himself locked out of the terminal. The life form was viable. Under galactic law, termination would lead him to spend the rest of his life mining helium in a deep space prison. Bolly's only option was to call a lab manager, effectively turning himself in. Then he would have to administer required childhood vaccines to the monstrosity, and make arrangements to have the fully grown newborn shipped off to receive the government education it was entitled. Bolly dejectedly meandered towards the communicator, located next to the opaque entrance portal. As he raised a pseudopod to summon a lab manager, he decided to take one last look over his shoulder to look at his creation. 
What he saw made him freeze where he stood. The creature was crouched close to the ground, awake and taking in his surroundings. Even without standing, his head brushed the tall ceilings of the laboratory. Wally whimpered in fear. He had seen how large the beast was when it was being created, of course. It had just looked a lot less menacing asleep. The creature's head snapped towards him, locking him in its all-too-alert gaze. His yellow and black eyes were mesmerizing, almost making Bolly forget about the jagged fangs extending from his snout. Almost. Bolly let out a sure scream and fainted. When Bolly woke up, he found himself in a medibubble. It was seen to be a hospital ship. He was not alone. Hundreds of other Louvrians surrounded him in bubbles of their own, being treated for various injuries. Some were quite gruesome. Observing his reflection, he was surprised to find he was a fifth of his former size. Oh, it's great that you're awake, a nurse smiled, as she glided over to his bubble. You were very lucky. We managed to go you back from your one surviving heart. Bolly's face followed in confusion. The last thing he remembered was sitting in his study pod, reading about some strange alien. One surviving heart? What happened? Where am I? The nurse's face fell. You must have lost your short-term memory, Organelle, she said sadly. But perhaps it's for the best. It would be traumatic for you to relieve what could have easily been your death. Bolly furrowed his face, trying his best to remember what could have happened after his study session. Had he gotten a pseudopod stuck in the ammonia fountain? He'd once read an article about that happening to someone, who then had to have the whole pseudopod amputated. But he would have had to really misuse the ammonia fountain to get a pseudopod stuck. Bolly wasn't that sort of Louvrian. And to lose four hearts? Whatever happened had to have been much worse. To start, we're off planet on a medevac ship, the nurse paused, seemingly collecting her emotions. There's been a terrorist attack on the homeworld, the worst in history. We were hoping you would know something since you were at Ground Zero, but if your memories are being lost... A terrorist attack on Louvre? Bolly exclaimed. Why would anybody want to do something so terrible? The only species allowed within Louvian space are allies. The nurse nodded sadly. Turns out our newest allies, the humans, weren't really our allies after all. It seems they were just waiting for us to let them in so they could strike at the heart of our civilization. The IGA thinks they dropped some sort of biological terror on Louvre. Our cities have been toppled and those who live there have been eaten. The planet is effectively uninhabitable for us now. Those you see around you are the only survivors. Why does the IGA think it was the humans? Bolly asked. In everything I've read about them, they've been depicted as a relatively peaceful species unless provoked or enticed. Why would they want Louvre destroyed? Our people have never posed a threat to any others. The nurse sighed. The IGA hasn't deciphered the motives, but they are very sure humans are responsible for the attack. The creature that destroyed our planet is predominantly made up of carbon, a phenomenon only ever seen on Earth. Only humans would have the expertise to craft such a terribly effective weapon from such an unusable material. Besides, DNA extracted from the beast originates from their planet. It seems this thing is even part human. It's practically a closed case. Molly's heart slowed. The situation was horrific, but the loss of life in the planet wasn't what stood out to him most about the nurse's recap of current events. Lurians would never go extinct. Their jobs as deep space physicians took them far from the homeworld, and they could always choose to multiply to regrow their numbers. What gave Bolly pause was the nurse's description of the monster that had destroyed his planet. Carbon-based, he mumbled. Something about that was uncomfortably familiar. Pushing away his unease, Bolly forced himself to smile at the nurse. Please claim me for release from this meta bubble as soon as possible. While it appears my identification cube was lost in the accident, I am a galactic physician in training, and will assist you in caring for the other patients. The nurse chuckled. Physician in training or not, I need all the help I can get. I'll check your vitals, and if your heart is stable, we'll release you within the hour. Bolly felt his heart beat a little faster, an idea taking root in his mind. Thanks, he smiled, generally this time. The bubble popped, and he was free. Before getting started, I'm going to need to ask one last favour. Looking past the sea of injured Louvrians, he spoke to the nurse. I'm going to need a line of communication open with the IGA's Biowarfare Division, and I'm going to need access to a Xeno Biochemistry Laboratory. I think I know how to strike back. As the communication channel opened and Bolly stepped into the virtual meeting room, he was shocked to find himself in a room filled with the IGA's greatest Xenobiologists, military strategists and administrators. He couldn't help but feel his chest swell with pride. He hadn't expected to be taken so seriously. There was a chance this plan would be implemented after all. Bolly's pride was replaced with shock and rage as he glimpsed the images suspended on the large screens covering the walls. Once beautiful Louvre had been ravaged, infrastructure had been reduced to rubble, national swamps and ponds contaminated. The carbon beast had single-handedly brought a mighty civilization to his knees. It was still there somewhere, 
on the planet's surface, feasting on his people, poisoning the air. Collecting himself, Bolly cleared his vocalization organelle of goo. Addressing those gathered in the room, he spoke with more confidence than he felt. Lady forms and gentle forms, I come before you in a time of crisis. The humans betrayed our trust, extinguished billions of billion Luvian lives and evicted us from our own planet. The room was quiet, the attention of each occupant fixed on Bolly as he spoke, but you know that already. What you don't know is how to stop it. Get on with it! Someone shouted from the back of the room. They were quickly hushed, but it was obvious others shared the sentiment. The beast that runs our planet is unlike we have battled in the past, Bolly roared. Neither it nor its creators play by any natural rules. Our planet may have been lost, but we cannot give up. Carbon-based life is inherently unnatural, and its domination of the galaxy must be prevented. Unfortunately, we are not physically equipped to defeat such foes. Humans, if they are anything like their creation, are simply too powerful. Our only option is to fight fire with fire. What are you proposing? A stern voice called from the crowd. Bolly singled in on the voice, locking eyes with the Commander-in-Chief of the Intergalactic Alliance. This is his chance. The chance to rise above his station. The chance to be remembered, not as the greatest physician of all time, but as a war hero, the saviour of his people. More importantly, this was a chance for him to scratch the nagging itch at the back of his mind. The feverish curiosity that filled him, for whatever reason, whenever he thought about carbon-based life. The road fallen silent to the question. Standing before the crowd of bigwigs, Bolly spoke directly to the Commander-in-Chief. Humans and their creation may be unstoppable for now, due to their strange elemental composition. They may hunt us as prey and drive us from our homes. Our only way out of the pit we find ourselves in is to reset the ecosystem. Humans cannot be allowed to sit at the top of the food chain. We must take this fight to Earth. He took a breath, making sure the impact of his last statement would be felt. I propose we create our own carbon beast. Far below the IGA fleet, on the surface of Louvre, all was still. Silver towers that once touched the sky lay broken and tarnished in the mud. Travel pods sat empty at their stations. A single living creature remained on the planet, his laboured breast punctuated by shrill wails. It was a social animal left all alone. It was miserably lonely. The sad beast lay in a den it had made for itself, curled up to protect against the frigid wind blowing through the ruins of Louvrian city. Eventually, the wailing ceased. The laboured breaths eased and then stopped entirely. But life had not that Louvre. Six wrinkly pups nuzzled their parents, searching for milk even as his body cooled. Finding no sucker, and growing hungry, the pups eventually wandered off on their own to search for food. They would not return or meet again until they were mature. As months turned to years, the pups grew in size and changed in form. They spread to every corner of Louvre, waiting for the day they could themselves usher in the next generation of pups. The beasts were social creatures. They would make sure they would never be alone again.